Welcome back to Android Weekly, my name's Jace, and today we cover things like new KitKat releases, both official and unofficial, and how exactly will Google reach the next billion users. Here it comes. Now by far the most common and anxious question asked here at Android Authority is something like, when will the next Android version be available for my particular phone? Well, in that case, we have some good news for you. Since last Tuesday, we had official over-the-air KitKat releases for both the Nexus 7 2012-2013 and the Nexus 10. Google does assure us that the Nexus 4 and cellular Nexus 7 will receive updates soon. Now, for those of you left still waiting and can brave the wilds of rooting your own phone, you can now find unofficial releases from ROM creators AOKP, CyanEngineMod, and OmniROM for KitKat 4.4. See the links below to find if your device is eligible. But of course, those Nexus updates can take time, and if you're really impatient, you can now manually install KitKat 4.4. My good friend Adam Kowater provides a detailed step-by-step -step guide with images to do just that. But now for some not so good news regarding the Galaxy S3 4.3 Jelly Bean release. As Samsung released this update for Android 4.3 Jelly Bean to international handset owners, users that install the software noticed several issues with their phones. Some of those problems included reduced battery life, app crashes, inconsistent Wi-Fi connections, laggy performance, and even complete lockdowns on the device on lock screens that can only be solved by pulling out and reinserting the battery. So how does Android reach the next billion users? Some people believe the Moto G is a good start. So although Samsung dominates the budget handset market currently, none of their affordable devices can compare to the Moto G's value offer. Consider this chart created by our own Android authorities, Android Crush. You can see here that with the Moto G's quad core, better RAM and battery life, make it a compelling offer considering the low price point. Moving on to Google Search on Android. Google Search 3.1.8 brings several improvements to devices running 4.1 Jelly Bean or later, including new designs and features. This is right from Google. If you are a fan of a particular blog, the website update card can bring you things like the latest posts so you'll never miss a story, and the news topic can bring you fresh articles from the web on topics you care about. The What to Watch card gives you movie and TV recommendations when you're staying in. Now, you know, we got to talk about how CyanogenMod installer arrived to Google Play. To grab the app, you simply need to head over to Google Play. Keep in mind that the app is useless without the required PC companion program, which is available directly from CyanogenMod's website. So what does the installer actually do? Basically, it automates the entire CyanogenMod installation process, requiring very little knowledge from the end user. The installer even handles rooting your handset and unlocking the bootloader. All you needed is a supported device, a USB cable, and of course, Windows. A Mac client is also in the works, but isn't quite ready yet. Now, if that news did not tickle your pickle, you may like to know that there is a rumor, emphasis on rumor, that San Mod is working on their own phone, different from the Oppo N1, that will run San Mod right out of the box and is priced very attractively, meaning comparable to the price of the Nexus 5 at about $350. The rumor makes no mention of the hardware partner that will build the CM device, though the obvious candidate is Oppo. Though we should take this rumor with a grain of salt, creating their own device is not the next logical step for the San Engine team. Alright guys, so I read all the comments and I got the message loud and clear. You would really like me to go into detail about why OEMs and device manufacturers cannot release an Android update at a reasonable time. We're going to go into that in depth this Wednesday for Android Q&A. I shall see you then.